This video is on short-term cardiac responses to physical activity. So you can see there are six key cardiac terms on this page and we need to be aware of what all of them mean. Main reason being it will help us to answer our questions more effectively but most importantly it will help us to understand the questions when we are asked using these words. So if we start off on the top left hand side with a word that we've probably all seen before, heart rate. Quite simply, it refers to the number of beats per minute, BPM. Okay, so the number of beats per minute that the heart goes through. If we then move over to the top right hand side, we can see maximum heart rate, otherwise known as MHR. Quite simply, that is measured as 220 minus your age. So, for example, if you are 15 years old and you wanted to find out your maximum heart rate, 220 minus 15 equals 205. So you would have a rough maximum heart rate of 205. That takes us down to here, our heart rate reserve, otherwise known as HRR. That is the difference between our resting and our maximum heart rate. So what we would do is we would work out our resting heart rate by measuring how many beats in one minute our heart goes through um, whilst resting, so sitting down and not really moving. And we would subtract that from our maximum heart rate that we worked out earlier, so 220 minus our age, and that would give us our heart rate reserve. That takes us on quite nicely to our three final terms, so slightly more complicated, but we really need to be aware of what they all mean. So stroke volume, that is the volume of blood pumped out by the left ventricle per beat. Now, usually you'd be okay with saying the volume of blood pumped out of the heart per beat, but we want to be nice and specific now. So we will say pumped out of the left ventricle per beat. It's really important that you get that bit right per beat. We move on to cardiac output. So similarly, it's the volume of blood pumped by the left ventricle per minute. So again, it's important that you get that in there so per minute our last term at the top bradycardia it refers to a heart rate of 60 beats per minute or lower at rest in trained athletes so what it's trying to say is that as a long-term training effect over time athletes will develop a stronger bigger heart muscle this will be capable of pumping out more blood than say previously before training and therefore the resting heart rate is much lower because the heart can achieve the same amount of blood circulation as it could when it was smaller with fewer beats as it's more powerful and it's contracting harder and forcing more blood around the body. Heart rate response to exercise. Now, whenever we see graphs which refer to heart rate response to exercise, we'll often see something like this. So the first thing to address are what do the two lines mean? So this red one up here, that is referring to uh, anaerobic activity. So we'll just call that anaero. And uh, the black line, you guessed it, is referring to aerobic uh, activity. So, <clears throat> to start off with, if we look on the left hand side, we can see both lines here are affected by A, so the anticipatory rise. So, both lines, heart rate increases, however, whilst at rest. This is quite simply due to increased hormonal action and the action of adrenaline and noradrenaline. So always when we're about to compete or we're about to play sport, our body 
almost gets itself ready by increasing heart rate before we've actually started moving around properly. Um, and that could again be linked to, you know, nervousness, preparing the body, anxiety, stuff like that. So we're always going to have this anticipatory rise at the beginning. So it's really important whenever you're labeling a diagram or talking about a diagram, you speak about anticipatory rise. Again, for both lines, we can see there is a sharp rise, so signified by B, a sharp rise on both lines. That is because we have started exercise. So we started exercise, our proprioceptors have picked up stimuli, um, we have continued release of hormones, um, and the body is really now starting to work and trying to get um, blood and oxygen to the working area. So we have a steep rise um, in heart rate. Often, um, you know, we experience that when we start exercising, we feel quite tired or more tired than we probably should right at the start. If we move down, we can see this term steady state. Now, it's important that you recognize that this only appears on the aerobic line. What is meant by steady state is that some of the oxygen debt starts to get repaid whilst we're exercising. So if we imagine uh, we're talking through a marathon event and we're looking at the black line before the race, we've got an anticipatory rise because we've got increased adrenaline levels. We then have a sharp rise when we start the race. Our heart rate starts increasing as as we sort of get into the race and then even before halfway through the race, we start to get this steady state. OK, and we're able to continue running comfortably for a prolonged period of time. And our heart and our lungs are able to get oxygen to the working muscles, remove waste products effectively and in some cases can repay oxygen debt at the same time. If we move to the next box at the bottom, so continued high heart rate, we can see this, however, is only for our anaerobic line. Now, we have had the sharp rise, but we're going to continue to have a high heart rate for anaerobic activity because we are not working in the presence of oxygen. So especially when we're working hard, our, um, our heart is going to be getting right up into the anaerobic training zone or the anaerobic zone. Um, and it's going to be quite getting quite close to our maximum heart rate. So we still have that continued high heart rate. In addition to this, um, we've also got increased waste products, so increased carbon dioxide, increased lactic acid, and our body's working hard to try and get rid of these. If we move over to the right hand side, we can now see there's a rapid recovery, as demonstrated by E there, on both lines. Um, that is basically as we begin to stop our exercise. So we've just stopped and we have this rapid decline in heart rate because all of, all of a sudden we do not need so much oxygen to our working muscles. We do not have so many uh, waste products to remove so we get a very steep uh, line showing a rapid recovery. If we look below we, we have slow recovery again you can see this only refers to our anaerobic system. reason there is a slow recovery there is because we have an oxygen debt that we need to pay it off. Unlike the aerobic line we can see it's much smoother and it finishes much earlier and gets back to normal much earlier. That's because we have less stores to replenish um, and our oxygen debt is far less. So all it's saying really is that when we're working anaerobically, our recovery is going to take longer because we have to neutralize lactic acid. We have to rebuild ATP stores. We have to remove carbon dioxide um, and other waste products. Cardiovascular drift in response to moderate exercise. So you may see this term pop up from time to time. Um, quite simply, all you need to do is uh, follow the box on the left and it will explain exactly what is going on. 
So cardiovascular drift only happens with prolonged aerobic activity at a constant intensity, such as marathon running, such as long distance cycling, long distance swimming, things like that. The responses are needed um, to transfer excess heat. So as we know, when we exercise, our muscles produce lots of energy and therefore lots of heat and our body needs to get rid of that excess heat. The main way that our body does this, as we may or may not be aware, is through vasodilation and sweat. So vasodilation is when our arteries expand, get brought closer to the surface and that of the skin and therefore can let off more heat out of the body. So the body does this, but as a result, we get a decreased plasma volume. Plasma is the watery element of the blood. So um, therefore the blood starts flowing slightly less well, becomes more viscous. So it's slightly thicker. Um, as a result, our venous returns, so the amount of blood going back to the heart is much slower and therefore our stroke volume, so the amount of blood that is pumped out of the heart per minute is decreased. Now this has an impact because obviously then we can't get as much blood around the body to where it needs to be. So our body compensates for this by increasing our heart rate, so the number of beats per minute. So although our heart is pumping out less blood per beat, it is now pumping more regularly to try and keep the same amount of blood pumping around the body. And this collective circulatory response is referred to as cardiovascular drift. So if we apply that to this graph on the right, if we just uh, make ourselves aware of the axis here at the bottom um, over time, so over time, as we're exercising um, aerobically for a prolonged period of time, so we can see here after about 20 minutes, it really started to, to drift. Our stroke volume, our green line, has started to decrease massively. As a result, our heart rate, the blue line, is on a constant shift upwards. Now these two elements effectively cancel each other out because we can see that over time our cardiac output so the amount of blood pumped out of the heart per minute has stayed roughly the same over the whole time not perfect but has stayed roughly the same over the whole time now one important thing to note is this part of the bottom here in the box. Staying hydrated will reduce the effects of cardiovascular drift. Now if we stay hydrated that means that our, we're going to have more saturated and um, sort of more uh, less viscous blood because we're going to have improved plasma volume and therefore our stroke volume will not decrease as much. So, for example, it might only decrease to about here. If it only decreases to about there, our heart rate only needs to increase roughly the same on the other side. So a much lower increase, which is obviously good for the body and will probably allow the athlete to run, cycle, swim for longer, as well as perform to a better level.